Hi everyone, so today I'm going to show you the second piece in my series of um, sand catchers or window decors. So this piece just uses a few nuggets in the center, these are chrysophrase, and then I've kind of channel set um, some 8mm rounds around the center here. So I'm going to start by talking you through the materials. So for this pendant, uh, I have used two different uh, sizes of nuggets. So you've got your beautiful moonstone nuggets here. Uh, then I've got obviously the chrysophrase, which I've used for the center. And I have used um, some 8mm or 6mm, I think they're 8 actually, 8mm amethyst rounds for the, um, for the channel setting. And then for the wire itself, around the frame i've used the one millimeter um copper wire and for the weaving it's the 0.4 or 0.6 you can use either as long as the wire actually fits through the drill holes because some of the nuggets have quite small drill holes so you need to just double check that whatever weaving wire you use actually fits through the holes okay so let's talk about the tools that we're going to be needing for for this um design Right, very simple. Um, you obviously need your cutters and I would recommend some uh, more heavy duty because you're cutting some one millimeter wire so your finer cutters with the, uh, the finer blades will actually get ruined if you use those. So I tend to use my, um, my heavy duty ones. Uh, then I've got normal chain knots pliers just to um, help you grab the wires. Um, as you're winding them around the frame, obviously your run nose pliers are for creating the twirls and um, the top rosary link for the attachment. And then I quite like to use my bent nose pliers because they're quite handy to get into areas that are hard to reach. So these are quite useful to have as well. Okay, so that's that. Shall we get started? Okay, so I'm going to bring the piece back in. So what we need to create first is obviously the frame. Now... If you have a thicker piece of wire, let's say like a 1.5 mil or even 2 mil, that would be fantastic. But since we're working with our 1 millimeter wire, we need to create something that is structurally um, sound. So what I've done is I've taken three of my 1 millimeter wires and I have cut around 45 centimeters each and I have combined them together. I'm going to show you how I've done this now. This is what it will look like. All right, so these are three of the wires twisted together. Now, there are several options to do this. You can either twist it by hand. Um, and the way I would twist it by hand is I would create a loop at the end and maybe attach it um, on a door frame or, you know, something that you can wind the wire around. And then the other end, I would twist around, let's say, a pencil or a paintbrush or anything that's got some, some length to it so you can do the twisting. So that's quite a tedious way of actually creating the twist. So what I use for this sort of thing is, and everybody will probably have one at home, is um, a drill. So I'm going to bring this in. I'm going to show you what I've done. So this is what it looks like. And all I've done is I've taken three of my wire pieces and I've added them to the chuck, just like you would normally for a drill bit um, that you have at home. And you need to make sure that all of the wires are nice and straight before you start twisting. So I've attached them, they're nice and tight. And I'm going to hold them first. And before I start, I'm going to go very slowly, start off with, to make sure that the wires are all straight and there's no uh, straggly bit. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in with my pair of pliers, go to the end of the wire. And I'm going to hold on to that and give it a slight pull. And then again, this. so this is what it looks like. So when I was talking earlier about trying to not have any twists, this is what happens when you do. So you need to just make sure that all of the wires are straight so that these sort of little lumps and bumps don't happen. When you make sure that they're all straight, it, it turns out to be really smooth. Um, and is a beautiful finish. So just make sure when you're twisting that these wires are, are all straight. So the next step you would need to do is open up the end. So now I've made a piece which is much longer. So this one was just for demo purposes so you could actually see it 
um, on video so I'm going to put that one away so this is one that's probably around about the appropriate size for what we're going to make and then if it's too long all you need to do is just undo some edges and um, if you want a little bit of wire left on the ends to um, to do some some twirling with for the twirls or you want other decorations you just need to undo and then just flatten it out unfortunately the wire does work hard a little bit when you twist it and untwist it so you're just going to need to you know bend it out a bit and put it together like that and make sure you don't bend it too much otherwise it will go brittle and actually break okay so once we've got the desired length we obviously need to shape this into a pair so i'm going to do is bend two of the wires on each side out of the way and do the same on the other side and I'm going to keep two I'm just going to straighten this out a bit more like so that's that and all I'm going to do now is create a rosary link so I'm going to bend the top at a 90 degree angle and come around with one of the wires that I've taken and wind this around once and twice and then just uh, push that together and also push it down so that it sits nice and then you're left with one wire at the top and we're going to create a rosary link with that so I'm just going to do a bend now for that you can bring in your round nose pliers or if you have one a bail making pair of pliers which is something like this and um, which is quite handy to have because it's got sort of stepped sizes and um, if you want to make different sizes of loops but if you don't have those you run those pliers will work just fine so i'm going to bring this in here and i'm going to bend this round so it doesn't quite look as tight as I'd like it to be with the camera in the way. So I hope you can follow what I'm doing. So I'm going to twist this and I'm going to hold on to this. And then just twist around itself. Like so. And just keep twisting until you have wrapped the end. I'm going to show you what it looks like here. So basically this is what it would look like. Um, we keep twisting and then you keep the wires that you have here either you can do it like me and um, use almost all of the wires to create a little decor here or you can just trim them off at this stage um, and just keep the actual pair itself so that's all you would need to do all right so we're going to just ignore this for now and uh, we're going to bend these out of the way because we don't need them just yet so we need to finish off what we're doing first so now you decide on the shape so I quite liked teardrop so I'm going to shape it into my teardrop. You can also make it around if you wanted to. That's entirely up to you. Um, and then I'm going to take another piece of my 0.1 wire and probably going to go another 45 centimeters. Because now is the actual uh, fiddly bit. So I'm going to cut this. You can even go a little bit shorter. It just depends if you actually want to use the ends as well as a decoration. So up to you. So I'm going to straighten out the ends a little bit. And what we need to do is shape another pair roughly. Just roughly for now. The same size, different size for the inside. Just so that it actually fits on the inside. So this is going to be the, the kind of center for the piece that we are going to make okay so now the next step once you have pre-shaped this we are going to take some of our amethyst all right so i'm going to pick this up first and i am going to attach these with a wire so i'm going to put this aside for now and i'm going to gauge where the center of my pair is at the bottom so it actually lines up with the the top so i'm going to attach it to that so just wind this around you just need a small piece of your either 0.4 or your 0.6 whatever you have handy and wind it around roughly about three three times 
like so. And then bring it up. And just to keep things neat and tidy, I'm going to push these together. And now is a little bit of a fiddly section here because you need to bring in your your amethyst. I'm going to feed this on. And then I'm going to bring in, actually going to cut off this wire here because it's going to go get in the way. You don't really need to cut it off all the way in case it slips, so leave a little bit of a tail. And what I'm going to do now is wind the point four around the one mil and don't worry yet if they are not lining up just yet as long as the stone is fit quite center that'll do so that's that I'm going to trim it off and then I'm going to do the same on the side. So you're just going to have to gauge. And in fact, I'm going to start at the top. I'm going to keep winding. And then I'm going to add another. You can see how this can be a little bit fiddly so you're just going to keep winding there we go and then basically you would just continue until you have enough of the beads attached so you can see that it's still quite loose you would obviously need to add in more so I've got a piece here that I have already done um, you can see here I've added in all of the amethysts that I want and you kind of line them up on each side so that they match on either side you can still see it's still a little bit loose but um, that's not a problem because once you have finished tying the top it'll actually be quite tight so the next step would be to actually twist the top so the next step is to actually secure the top. So you're going to pull this slightly and you're going to have to make sure that where they cross over are actually the same lengths on either side so they don't so it doesn't actually look wonky. And I'm going to bend these up a little and I'm going to twist these together. I'm actually going to use my tool rather than my hands. And then lift them actually not twist. So just going to have to make sure that these actually line up. Twist. And just keep twisting. And you can use your hands. Um, obviously take better care. I'm trying to maneuver here with the camera in the way, so it's not ideal. So that's why it's not as tidy as it would be. So you'd obviously carry on twisting until you reach the top, okay? And then simply wind the ends around the side here. Do the same on the other side. As I said, you know, you would make sure to reach the top, be closer near the top. And just wind and then tighten these up a little bit like so and then either you can you know hide the section here with the twists you could bend these wires down as well and you know create more more um twirls with it so when you do twirls to create a twirl about this size you would probably need a length of wire of roughly about i think that would be about four centimeters or so You'd cut it and then you would get a twirl of this length. You can obviously um, make them a lot a lot more longer, a lot longer if you wanted to. So leave it longer and you have bigger twirls as well. You could cover up the whole top section with that. Um, okay, so the next step would be to just um, fill in the center section with our um, nuggets. So what I'm going to do, I've only, if you have a look here, the actual design here I've only used one section 
in between two of the amethyst that's all you need all right so it's about one two three four five six seven strands of my nuggets so the way to attach these is you bring your wire through and you just wind it around the frame once twice maybe three times just to make sure it's secure like so push the weave together and then all you need to do is pick up the nuggets that you have obviously as i was saying earlier you can really use any color that you like so i've got several types here so i've got my moonstone and then i've got my chrysophrase so i'm going to feed these on here really see the holes that's sometimes the trouble with nuggets and um, they're so well drilled you can't actually see what you're doing there you go so again doesn't really matter what kind of pattern you go by i've gone white at the bottom and then darker with a chrysophrase around the edges so that's just my preference with the gemstone so anyway you get the idea so you would feed them on so this is a bit of a fiddly process to get just the wires on and then all you would do is obviously wind these wires you'd kind of gauge where they have to sit so i'm going to wind this one around here so that one is a little bit too long you don't need that much of a length for the shorter sections um so for the short section i'll probably go about 10 centimeters for the longer sections i would cut about 15 20 centimeters just so you have a little bit of wire to maneuver okay and then the last step uh, entirely up to you again as i've done before is to create a little twirl at the top so you cut your wire to length and then all it is is you twist twist it and this is where your uh, pliers come in handy you bring this in and then you kind of roll it these back onto each other it's a bit like the um I don't know if you've done these these french knitting dolls when i was in school when i was a little girl we used to have these knitting dolls we used to knit a little sausage and then roll it up like this and create like a beat like a um a mat that you put your hot pots on and sort of things and then that's kind of looking like that so then you would just arrange it on top of that um and yes this is how you create this pendant or suncatcher whichever way you like to look at it so i hope you enjoyed this and um I'd like to see your designs